Welcome into Baco Booth, everybody. My name is Benson Fector, and I will be the host of your show today. Baseball is back, and opening day was yesterday. We're going to recap it all for you today over the course of this hour episode and go over the three games, the exhibition games, that they played against the Cleveland Indians last week. So for the Pirates this week, they went 0-4. Lost all three exhibition games and the opener yesterday. Saturday, they lost by a score of 5-3 to three to the Indians. On Monday, they lost a high-scoring affair, 11-7. to seven. Wednesday, in their final exhibition game, they dropped that one 5-3. to three. And last night, in the only game that really mattered, they dropped the game to the Cardinals, 5-4. to four, And we will recap all of it. I'll mostly be looking into opening day, but a little bit into the, the exhibition games that happened during summer camp. To give us an idea of what the next 59 games may look like for this Pirates team. But we do have uh, some things that we need to dive into first, including our mailbag for the week. First question is from Amir. He wants to know, will Stallings have a breakout year? And from all signs, Jacob Stallings is a very good defensive catcher. I would put him as a top 10, maybe even a top 5 defensive catcher, and we saw what he could do last night, but also we saw what he could do last night with the bat, driving in two of the four runs, also the only two runs that the Pirates scored off of Cardinals' ace and one of the best pitchers in baseball and Jack Flaherty. Jacob Stallings has the makings of being a top 10 catcher, and while he is 30 years old, he still has plenty of good years ahead of him, and by the end of the season, I would be shocked if the consensus isn't that Jacob Stallings is a very good catcher, and he could be a top 10 catcher by the end of 2020. Our final question today that I'll be taking comes from Michael. He wants to know, should Cole Tucker be a starting outfielder? And we saw with the lineup today that Cole Tucker is going to be batting ninth. That's not the breaking news. The breaking news is that he's going to be starting in right field. We saw him get some st- a start in the exhibition games against the Indians. He played a little center field and right field. Looked okay out there, but he's going to be making his first professional, his outfield debut today in right field. In right field, he can handle out there. He's very athletic, but ultimately what I think the Pirates should do, and we did get the news that Gregory Polanco is going to be back next week, but if they're really serious about getting Cole Tucker at bats, move Frazier to right, move Newman to second, and Tucker to short. That gives the team the best defensive alignment possible while also allowing Cole Tucker to get the bat, the at-bats that the Pirates clearly are wanting to give him. So the answer is he should be starting, but I don't think it should be in the outfield. All right, we're going to get to our awards of the week. First one of these in a long time. They're going to include both the exhibition games and the opener last night. Our player of the week goes to Josh Bell, a three fifty seven average this week. 5 for 14. He hit two home runs and three RBIs. Uh, all those hits and RBIs uh, were in the exhibition games, but he looked very solid, looked like he was in midseason form, and you can't put too much credence in the first official game of the season yesterday, but I would... Again, my prediction from this year is 330, 18 home runs, 54 RBIs. Uh, lofty predictions for sure, but Josh Bell can definitely do that. He is a very strong man, a very talented hitter hitting from both sides of the plate. And Derek Shelton is giving him a little bit of a boat of confidence by having him start at first base these last two days when they could have went Osuna or Moran at first base rather than giving Josh Bell those starts. Pitch of the week goes to Dovidas Navaraskis and Two games, one and two-thirds innings pitch, gave up four hits, two runs, no walks, three strikeouts, high area of 10.80 and a whip of 2.40. But the reality is Neverowskis, and the reason why I chose this was because he looked really good while pitching. He only gave up the the four hits in his one and two-thirds. He struck out three guys, three out of the five outs uh, he got word by the strikeout, and that's what you like to see with Dovidas. And he has all the makings and all the stuff, and he finally, I think 2020 is going to be the year where he puts it all together. He made the opening day roster, so good stuff there from Dovidas. But if you if you really break it all down and if you think about it, he has the, the chance and the opportunity to be a really solid pitcher for the Pirates moving forward. And to think it, it is it, 
is impossible for Dovidus Nevraskis to be a solid pitcher is it's just not true because he has all the makings and all the stuff to be just that. Our rookie of the week goes to Philip Evans. A 286 average, 2 for 7, a home run and 2 RBIs. All that was in the exhibition action, but Philip Evans is going to be making his Pirates debut today at third base for the club. Colin Moran will DH for the day. Uh, Philip Evans is an intriguing prospect, an intriguing player. The Pirates brought him in on a minor league contract. He's had a little bit of major league time, but really, Philip Evans, he, he still has his rookie status and he could prove Mitch Keller's also a rookie, so is Jason Martin, but really Evans, Martin, Keller are all going to be the guys, the rookies this year that we can point to and say that they're going to be playing well. Philip Evans has big power. He hits the ball hard, can now play all over the field. He started in right field in an exhibition game, so watch out for Philip Evans this year. He's going to be a sneaky utility player for the Pirates. And our glove of the week goes to Colin Moran. Five total chances, three assists, two putouts. No errors from the Redbeard at the hot corner. And the biggest thing with Moran, and I've consistently said this, is that if he could just get his defense squared away, he would be a very good third baseman. However, he is easily the worst defensive third baseman in all of baseball. But from what I saw from him over the course of the past four games, it looks like he may finally be starting to turn the corner at third base. He doesn't have flashy speed, and he never will. His range is limited. But if he can make the plays he's supposed to make, he has an excellent arm at third base. Make the plays he's supposed to make, increase the range a little bit, and he could be a very good third baseman. We're still thinking that Key Brian Hayes is the future at third base, but I would watch out for a breakout year from Colin Moran in 2020 if he can figure out that glove at third base. After struggling in 2019, Richard Rodriguez's 2020 season started off poorly. This season, the Pittsburgh Pirates need to give the reliever a short leash. During the 2018 season, Richard Rodriguez burst onto the scene for the Pittsburgh Pirates. After signing as a minor league free agent, he went on to post a 2.47 ERA, 2.60 FIP, 6.8% walk rate, 31.5% strikeout rate, and 0.65 home runs per nine in 69 and a third innings worked across 63 games. Unfortunately, it appears his 2018 season may prove to be an outlier. Rodriguez struggled mightily in 2019, and his 2020 season got off to a poor start in Friday night's 5-4 loss against the St. Louis Cardinals. Last season, Rodriguez posted a 3.72 ERA in 72 games and 65 and a third innings of work. However, his 3.72 ERA did not tell the entire story. His FIP was a poor 5.22, and a big reason for the high FIP was a rise in home runs allowed. Rodriguez allowed 14 home runs in 2019, after allowing just 5 in 2018. This led to his home runs per 9, spiking from 0.65 to an alarming 1.93. Additionally, his walk rate rose 8.1%, but more concerning was his strikeout rate plummeting to 22.1%. In Grapefruit League and Summer Camp Exhibition play, the struggles continued for Rodriguez. In six innings of work, he allowed five earned runs and three home runs. Also, in these outings, his velocity was down. This is not good. Friday night in St. Louis, new manager Derek Shelton turned to Rodriguez in the bottom of the eighth with the Pittsburgh Pirates trailing 3-2. Rodriguez's velocity remained down. His fastball averaged 90.5 miles per hour after averaging over 93 miles per hour in 2019. And he allowed what would prove to be a back-breaking two-run home run to Paul DeYoung that would seal the game. In the end, this home run proved to be the winning hit as the ninth inning rally came up short for the Pittsburgh Pirates in a 5-4 loss. With Rodriguez's struggles with the home run ball dating back to the start of the 2019 season, as well as his drop in velocity, he needs to have a short leash this season. When Shelton went to Rodriguez on Friday night, the move was questioned, and rightfully so. This needs to be the last time Shelton goes to Rodriguez in a high-leverage situation. 
Friday night, Shelton should have gone to Nick Birdie or Michael Feliz in that situation. Had he done so, the Pittsburgh Pirates may have walked out of Bush Stadium victorious on their season opener. As long as Rodriguez is on the Pirate roster, he needs to only be used to mop up situations in games that are out of control. If he cannot get back on track, then he should be one of the two players taken off the roster when rosters drop from 30 players to 28 on August 6th. After years of toiling in the minor leagues, these three Pittsburgh Pirates prospects might soon be at the end of their road with the team. In any sport, prospects are not an exact science. This is especially true in baseball, as fans of the Pittsburgh Pirates as well as every other MLB team have seen over the years. A team's first round pick is not a guaranteed future MLB player, and just because you rank higher on prospect lists doesn't mean you're going to be a future star. Sometimes, this isn't the prospect's fault. They get passed ahead by other more talented players, injuries occur and can further push a prospect back, or they simply just don't live up to the hype. The Pittsburgh Pirates have a few prospects who are being passed on both the prospect and depth charts. So, let's take a look at three prospects who are running out of time to prove themselves and become reliable MLB players. Now, just because they're running out of time doesn't mean they won't ever be successful. But as the Pittsburgh Pirates currently stand, they're not seeing as long-term building blocks with many other prospects now passing them or because of an injury. First guy we're going to look at is utility man Kevin Kramer. The Pittsburgh Pirates selected Kevin Kramer in the second round of the 2015 draft, but he has yet to break out into an MLB caliber player. The UCLA product played his first full professional season in 2016 where he batted a solid 277, had a 352 on base, and a 378 slugging with a 12.3% strikeout rate and 116 WRC+. Although not a big power threat, Kramer was seen to have an above average hit tool, a decent but not overwhelmingly fast base runner and solid fielder with a weak arm. Kramer played second base in all of 2016, but had seen a little bit of time at shortstop in his professional debut season a year prior. In 2017, Kramer would miss most of the year, only playing in 57 games and receiving 251 plate appearances because of a hand fracture. The lefty batter further built up his prospect stock as when he was healthy, hit for a 290 average, a 371 on base, and a 479 slugging, with 17 doubles, three home runs, stealing eight bases, and having a 141 WRC plus in double A. He played across three different levels in 2017, but most of his playing time came from Altoona, where 234 of his 251 plate appearances came from. By now, Kramer was seriously making a name for himself in the Pirates minor league system. He entered 2018 as the team's ninth best prospect per MLB pipeline. Kramer would only get better as in 2018, the middle infielder batted 311, had a 365 on base and a 492 slugging with 15 long balls, 35 doubles, 13 stolen bases and a 141 WRC plus through 527 plate appearances at AAA. Although his strikeout rate nearly doubled from 2016, now sitting at 24.1%, Kramer would end the year as the Pirates' seventh best prospect. He did receive a few MLB plate appearances in the majors, but struggled in the small sample size of 40. Plus, he also saw some time in left field, further widening his versatility. But going into 2019, Kramer would see his value fall a decent amount. He followed up his outstanding 2000 AAA season with a subpar season at the same minor league level. This time, through 448 plate appearances, Kramer hit just for a 260 average, a 335 on base, and a 417 slugging, with 10 home runs and 30 doubles, all coming to a 92 WRC+. Kramer's future with the Pittsburgh Pirates is now in serious limbo. Not only has the awful season at AAA really brought down his value, but he has also struggled at the major league level. Although he has only 90 MLB plate appearances under his belt, Kramer is hitting for a 387 OPS and 7 
OPS+. While I don't think he'd hit that way for...